Hi there, uh, Doug Milburn here, president and uh, co-founder of 45 Drives, here with Brett Kelly, who is our head of engineering. And uh, Brett's got some really interesting stuff to show us today. Yep, we're back for an update on our hard drive and SSD endurance video. So uh, you broke something. I did break something. Congratulations. Yeah. Love when you say that. Yeah, I did it on purpose too. That was the best part. I, I love it. Yeah, the yeah. accidental kind of sucks, eh? Yeah, yeah. When you're ready for it, it, it all works out. So just to review this, what were we testing? We had three things we're testing. Give us an overview. So we wanted to continuously write to storage media to see how long they lasted. So we took one of our um, Q30 machines. We put enterprise storage hard drives in it. We put consumer storage hard drives in it. We actually put some of the Skyhawk mid-range um, um, Seagate drives in it as well. And we put enterprise SSDs in this thing as well. And we consistently ran the same test on all of them concurrently and repeated over and over and over writing to them, deleting it, writing to them, deleting it to just work work them as hard so as we could. Just beaten in these things. That's correct. So. There's a common misconception we see in the industry and the feeling that one of these things, well, it must be because it makes sense. And that is that SSDs, because they have no moving parts, are just way more durable mm -hmm. than spinning hard drives. Is that a general truth? That is a general truth if we're talking about throwing, throwing them around and playing catch with them and stuff like that. But uh, under the hood, if... if, if uh, if you write to these things repeatedly over and over and over again, it, w it wears the, uh, the NAND out, the actual flash memory underneath. So, yeah, they're, they'll survive a toss across the room better than a hard drive will. But it, continuously writing to them, not, not so much. True, there's a weakness, isn't yeah. it? So we did this and uh, we started, uh, it's July 11th, I got in our notes here and my, yep. my, my handwritten notes I have here. So July 11th, we started beating this up and, and so the first thing to fail was the SSDs. The first thing to fail was the SSDs. Okay, so we're in December, <coughs> what's the date today? 7th. 7th of December right now. Yep. Uh, and uh, we, so this started to fail October 16th. It eh? started to fail October 16th, yeah. So if we go back and look at our charts, we can see right around October 16th, there's a blip in performance. The SSDs were continuous the whole time. They were, you'd start the right, they'd, go their peak speed, they'll, they'd write the whole time, consistent flat line, reset and go. Um, once October 16th kicked in, well, the performance took a little dip. That's where we were notified, I saw that. And uh, looking at our charts here, we can see that that's when the smart control data on it said, this is the end of this drive's lifetime. Okay. It got to 0% and uh, it started failing its smart test at that point. And anyone who would be running one of these systems went, oh, my drive's dead, time to replace it. Yeah. We said, why don't you keep going? Yeah. So we did not end the test on October 16th. Yeah. It's actually still running on those drives right now. Yeah. What's interestingly enough is the file system, or the, the, the Linux system itself, isn't throwing any errors that the drive has died. Yeah. I can still write to it. Now, I imagine if I went back and tried to read from it, it would be like, oh, yeah, I don't well, know where these data are. Data integrity. Yeah, data you integrity never use garbage. that for any data you cared about, would you? Exactly. That's and that's point. why yeah. in normal, you would be watching this lifetime of it. You'd be getting rid of it before then. And, and, and as soon as it fails a smart test, you'd pop it out of your array and put a new one in. But uh, what happened after it hit that point is it just limped along. It's just, it's been slower. And then what's cool is when they were being written to consistently, you can see in the charts before that, it was just flat. Both drives were the exact same. As you'd expect, it's the same model of drive. Yeah. After the failure point, they all started failing a little differently. Yeah. One drive did better than the other one for a while, and then it dropped, and yeah, so. So it's flaky, and you can see in the graphs here. Yeah. What, what, what are you using, what's the software you're using here to? So uh, we're using Grafana to plot all our charts here. Grafana is a great open source uh, visualization tool. We use that in all aspects of our our business here, both internally and with all our Ceph clusters. And we're using Prometheus, which is a time series database. I put that in quotes because the real database folk are probably yelling at me for saying it that right now. But it's essentially what that does is it collects all our data, stores it in the database, Grafana plots it, 
And what's really cool about Prometheus and why we're using that is its concept of how it pulls metrics from things is built and architected in such a way that all the exporters, that's what they use to collect data, um, you can just make an exporter, have it speak Prometheus language, it'll just scrape data in. So what we're doing is we're using a smart data like the SMAR team. Yep. Um, yep. It registers inside the, registers. the drive. Yep. There is a, a Prometheus exporter for that. It scrapes yep. all the data to the drive, puts it in the database, and that's yep. why we have this nice long time sequence. Of it. I, I'm a data guy, I love looking at data, yep. and it's just, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. Okay, let's move on to this and let's talk about this. So this drive was, what kind of drive, uh, solid state drives do you have in there? We had Micron. 5400 pros. Okay, so these are enterprise. These are enterprise SATA SSDs. Ain't your cheapies. They aren't cheapies. And, and they're lots rougher, tougher, and durable yep. versus they. Yep, they're rougher and tougher, durable, and they have a lot of things that SSD enterprise drives have that the consumer ones don't, or stuff like power loss protection, yep. and uh, all those nice edge cases for when you get dirty power ripped out of the things and they don't break. Yep. That's that's the big one there, and they're just a little more rugged that way too. Okay, so and it was a smaller drive that we put in. Yep, just a four hundred and eighty gig. Pulling stuff out of the lab, they had yeah. four hundred and eighty gigs, so it's not a very big drive. So you know, and these things, of course, the amount of data you can write to them has to do with how big the drive is. They Correct. got a percentage of spare cells is what they yep. put in them, and when a cell dies just replace it with a good one mm -hmm. and that dies then at a certain point it, they, they just they run down you look you look at that in smart register how linear it is yeah. as it came down eh? yep stepped right down so so we did our math on this and i got a nice little piece of paper here it's a uh, hand scratch note so july 11th october 16th 95 days before it died that little 480 gigabyte thing there pretty quick it was 365 megabytes per second that yep, was right right yep and uh, and it turns out that that was 9,500 drive writes, yep. like roughly 100, 100 and to drive be clear, writes. Today. We were writing sequential data to this. It wasn't random data. It was sequential. so it speeded up yep. a little bit. Yeah. So so 9,500 times it wrote the drive, and that used up after that all of the, the spare NAND burned out on it. Down she goes, uh, and then we looked out at, at its ratings, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And uh, if we look at how many terabytes. So that, that's roughly a half terabyte, roughly speaking, yep. 9,500 times. So it'll be like 4,750 terabytes written to it. And we looked up the lifetime and Micron, got to love Micron. We sell Micron stuff, really like what they do. And it says that uh, the rating for that is 1,300 terabytes. Mm -hmm. It's rated lifetime and we got 4,750 out of it. That's pretty good. So they, and it may be the sequential thing. I don't know. You yeah, have to do an experiment. To, they do have the footnote on their note that they did their, that workload was written with a 100% random yeah. um, IO. So, Kay. great. So, totally. Sounds like a round two of this experiment. It, yeah, yeah, we can do some more on that. Uh, it's just really interesting. And then you look at that and you say, okay, that SSD you bought, you can write to it 9,500 times. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's good, it, you know, it's not like you write one bit of data 9,500 times, it's, you can write the full drive. Exactly. They, they yeah. distribute the data around to make sure they use the cells, the cells evenly and don't wear any particular ones out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, okay, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, and the, uh, yeah, so write speed on it. Um, yeah, we said 365 megabytes per second. So we looked over at our enterprise hard drives and go, SSDs, this is a SATA SSD. Mm -hmm. uh, and 365, that's a faster write yes, than our hard is. drive. So our top write speed on the on the spinner was? On the enterprise Exo Seagate spinner drives, the top was 265 megabytes a second. Yeah. So not radically different in speed. Nope. It's a nope. factor too. It's meaningful, but yeah. not but but not not absolutely radical. Especially when you're talking the sequential workloads we're giving to it right now. Yeah. So then the other problem I have in this thing, the last thing I really want to talk about this is you know and, and I'm dying of curiosity and I go how long are our spinners going to last? Mm -hmm. The problem we got in the spinners is number one they're you know, sort of half the write speed. Yeah. So to, to do a drive right for an equivalent size drive would take twice as long, but that's not, you know, they died in October, 95 days. We're coming on, you know, 160% of that. Mm -hmm. So if it was just that, uh, we'd be good. But our problem is, is how big are the spinners you put in there? Six terabytes. Yeah, whoops. Yeah, yeah. we should use something smaller because you're just not going to get the drive rights. You got so, you got, you, so you got six terabytes, so 12 times bigger, roughly double the, the speed. So it's going to take 24 times longer. Mm -hmm times 100 days to go, that's 2,400 days. Uh, yeah, this test's gonna go on a long time, probably. Yes, eh? it is. 
So, and uh, if we had, you know, so anyway, we're really thinking about that and going, you know, the, the if spinners, consumer and, and and enterprise, they're just, you're not seeing anything on them, are you? Like they're no, that's really 100%, 100 here. good. Yeah, it wasn't a great apples to oranges between the two of them, but uh, what we are seeing is that hard drives and consumer drives just tick along fine. Yeah. They do consistently what they did when we started this back in July, they're doing right now, same thing. So, you know what? We're scratching our heads in this, so yeah. we're just thinking, you know, you know what we need to do? We need to buy, and, and again, sorry, I wish we had done this at the start, but let's go buy some something that's like a half terabyte, let's see if we can get a 480 gigabyte hard drive enterprise. Yep. And, uh, and, and say the consumer, but that might be a challenge because that's, that's off the bottom of the market now. Yes, that could be a challenge or we could approach it the other way and get a bigger SSD yeah. and compare them that way. Yeah, but, but then, then you but still then got the whole into, workload We're into 2400, uh, 2,400 days or something like that. And mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm way curious. So I'd like to see that before. Yeah. You know what, we'll talk to our buddies at Seagate. We'll see what I we bet do. you Seagate's got some stuff kicking around and some back inventory somewhere mm -hmm. and uh, that they, they'd love to share with us. Because I'd, I'd love to do that. I'd love to get to, uh, you know. Anyway, it, it's not going to be right away. This long-term stuff. But anyway, there we are. We killed the enterprise, an enterprise SSD yep. by writing to it, and our other stuff is just chugging away, happy as clam, eh? Chugging away, happy as a clam. While we're here, we'll report on the hard drives. Uh, both consumer and enterprise are chugging away, happy as a clam, as we just said. Um, there's been no noticeable performance degradation on either or. Um, the consumers are a uh, good bit slower than the, the enterprise drives. Like we said, the peak speed on the enterprise drives is 265 megabytes a second. The consumers are barely getting over 200. Oh. So, um, but in terms of reliability and working, they're the same as they're, uh, they're doing the same thing now as what they did when we started them up in July. And, and another data point, we are about the same amount of data. Well, not quite almost. We're probably 80% of the data written before, you know, I think of, uh, uh, of the, the the total number of terabytes written to this thing when it first hit failure, we're probably both there in the enterprise drive by my rough map, yep. math. Uh, you know, half the speed coming up to twice long, not quite. So we're a little under that. We're at eighty five percent probably of the data written and zero degradation, and probably not going to see it for a long, long time. But that's a bit of a cheat because it's a bigger drive, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and and although the mechanism of drive rights and everything else i mean that media is going to last forever it's going to be the mechanicals that would exactly are. if we're really when we're comparing rights between the two of them it's like of course the ssds went first that's yeah. the one kind of achilles heel that everyone knows of yeah. flash a memory. small yeah a small ssd drive is going to die way before a big hard drive especially when you're writing to it repeatedly so brett yep. uh this was SATA SSDs. Correct. What happens the lifetime, rated lifetime, if you move to an NVMe uh, SSD? Is it longer life or, uh, or shorter life? Well, based on Micron's ratings that I was looking at, is it's a slightly shorter life than the SSDs. It's fascinating. Right now. It is fascinating. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I'll say is um, comparing a NVMe one now, the 7450, to the one I was just looking at, the 5400, are a couple years in the model difference too. Yep. And NVMe, or Flash in general is a wild west, for lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, it is interesting to see what, that, what will be the difference there. Now, I'll tell you one thing, they are incredibly faster. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's really interesting. So you think about lifetime, so we, we wrote 9,500 times to that, and so you're gonna get less than that on the on the NVMe. Yeah. And then how much faster are you? The, like, so that drive, uh, you know, the one we had 365 megabytes a second, what are you getting on our, our new server? Like, the, the uh, like on a single drive on a right, we're getting about three gigabytes a second. So, so about three gigabytes, so 10, 10 times the speed. 10 times the speed. So that's really interesting. We got 95 days of wide open writing. Mm -hmm. So that means you get nine and a half days that we beat up that. My God, that that's interesting, isn't it? So you get NVMe and, uh, and, and, and you're going, yeah, so media lifetime is something to consider. If it's rights, if it's reads, absolutely oh, not. It reads yeah. for eternity, right? Yeah. And, uh, but a right heavy workload, really have to think about that, uh, about, uh, you know, pumping a new, you know, if you're doing the same thing, imagine nine and a half days, but, but that's what you get. So three gigabytes, three gigabytes, not gigabits, 
gigabytes. Coming out of that thing. Uh, that's our yeah. new, uh, yeah, we just, we're, we're now just about ready to ship our new just about 32 ready. drive and yep. you mean beast. My God, it's fast, isn't it? Yeah. Just, it's stunningly fast. Yeah, it takes off. Just absolutely ridiculous. So uh, anyway, that's cool. They're, they're, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, it just sounds like uh, you should uh, do some uh, endurance measurements on those as well. You know what? We got one coming. One, one of them stained all this first batch. It's coming out of manufacturing. It's gonna gonna go to the lab, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's get something in it. Yeah. Let's run it. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can kill one of these things in uh, in nine and a half days. All right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That'll good. be fun. You like breaking things. That's fast. Yeah. 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 Anyway, good fun. I wish we had the ultimate conclusions and could tell you where everything died now and yeah. like the, you know probably clear to us right now that it's gonna be a long, long time. Yeah, before, it is gonna uh, be a long, long time before it goes. So you know we're gonna we're gonna do something to experiment, put yeah. some new stuff in and and our torture tests shall continue. The beatings shall continue the until morale improves, right? Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, yes yeah. we are. Now we can go. That's what we should do. We should put another server in. We should leave this one alone, do another server. We should maybe write to them randomly. I don't know. We'll, let's talk. Let's let's, sure. let's have some yeah. fun. Lots of servers around here. Yeah. Oh. yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks folks. We'll be back.